The second book is by a local favorite. His name is Bill Walsh, who was the coach of the 49ers, the San Francisco 49ers. He took a team that was at the very, very bottom, and he brought them to the top. He focused entirely on the details. He didn't come in and just say, you all need to win games. He said, you need to tuck in your shirts. You need to clean your lockers. This is how we answer the phones here. He set a new standard of performance. One of the hardest transitions anyone has to make, and especially anyone in this room has to make, is going from individual creation to actually leading a team. It's something that I certainly fumbled with along the way. I was not really excited about reading any leadership books or management books, and this was actually the first one that I ever read, and it was given to me by Keith Raboy when I hired him as our GM at Square and on 23rd employee. I'm gonna read a few passages of it from, from this book to you. So he starts off the book by saying, running a football franchise is not unlike running any other business. You start first with a structural format and basic philosophy, and then find people who can implement it. You start first with an idea and a philosophy, a purpose, a mission, and then you go and you find people to help you implement it. The book, if you read it, and I definitely encourage you to read this book if you're thinking about leading teams or building a company or leading a team within an organization, is a series of lists, a series of lists of what to do and a series of lists of what not to do. And he starts off by establishing a, a standard of performance. And Bill's standard of performance is thus. First, when you establish a standard of performance with your team, you start with a comprehensive recognition of, reverence for, and identification of the specific actions and attitudes relevant to your team's performance and production. Number two, you be clear and clear in communicating your expectation of high effort and execution of your standard of performance. Number three, let all know that you expect them to possess the highest level of expertise in their area and responsibility. Number four, beyond standards and methodology, you teach your beliefs, your values, and your philosophy. Number five, teach connection and extension. You don't want a group of independent contractors. You want people who feel connected that can actually expand the organization. And number six, make the expectations and metrics of competence that you demand in action and attitudes from personal, the new reality your, of your organization. Now what's important about this is as you start building a team, you need to set expectations around how people need to perform in the company, how people need to act in the company. And these can be very, very simple things, but without that, you are rudderless you will react to the outside. And if you react to the outside, you are building someone else's roadmap and you're building someone else's dream instead of your own. And as you grow, you're collective own. 